I remember our last uh, class in our marketing course where yeah. you played um, Michael Lewis's yeah. um, the commencement, address, commencement yeah. address, right? And it made me think a lot about luck. And I mm-hmm. heard you just mention luck, right? Mm-hmm. Don't be deceived by life's outcomes. Life's outcomes, while not entirely random, have a huge amount of luck baked into them. Above all, recognize that if you had success, you've also had luck. And with luck comes obligation. You owe a debt, and not just to your gods. You owe a debt to the unlucky. There seems to be this challenge as a young person where you have to balance the recognition that luck plays um, in sort of like the outcomes of your life and and the, the environment you grew up in while also recognizing that there has to be a certain level of accountability That's necessary right. in order to um, be competent and progress in your pursuits and, and, and become a, a, let's call it an excellent yep. uh, achiever of their goals, right? Good habits. <laughs> How do you think young people should sort of reconcile the, that interplay between accountability and luck? Well, I think I also was playing uh, a parental role in that in that farewell lecture because I have two daughters your your age, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I remember, you know, there was they were sleeping well, hanging out with um, friends, not abusing LinkedIn, finding finding the hundred people you talk with once a year, the fifty twice a year, and so forth. Like managing the relationships, remembering birthdays, remembering spouses' names, things like that. Those are all very important. Eating well, sleeping well. Th- those are the things that's like buying insurance premiums, like your house against flooding or fire. That's all you can do. There's, only, there's a limited number of things that you can do. But one is that always be learning. See, when I was your age and there was no internet, there was, there was no chance to maintain your education. If you were a lawyer or a doctor, you were taking bar review courses mm-hmm. or you were uh, required the Hippocratic Oath to, to read certain publications. And if you're a board surgeon, you had to get tested from time to time. There, there was always that. But there wasn't the opportunity to learn Python at 62 years of age or sequel, or any of those things. And I do think that your generation will have to avail themselves of that continuing education in a way that mine didn't. Like we walked out with our certificate, the economy was 5% GDP a year, and we got a job. You could be an art history major. Remember Michael Lewis is like, it was an act of insanity to be an art history major. Mm -hmm. Well, but the economy was booming and, you know, I just got plugged into an investment banking job. Yeah, he didn't. What did he know about bonds and stuff? Nothing, right? Yeah. That was the irony of it. But that was also characteristic of that era that you could just kind of walk out and and and, and never look over your back about having to learn anything again. For me, you know, political science, and that was it. You yeah. know, and, and then until graduate school, and then that was it. Um, but now I find myself kicking myself for not having kept up with SQL and some of these other tools that, that the kids are. So, so my advice is that you are going to have to be more diligent than my generation about maintaining that education and getting the certificates. And, you know, your, your, your resume end up being three pages with the certification. That's why I gave the Google, Google Analytics certification. It's like, I think Google will be around in 50 years. A lot of other stuff won't be. I even said a few years ago to my class, I don't think Twitter is going to be around. And sure enough, it became X or whatever, right? Mm. So, but I, that was kind of a, 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 a signal that continuing education is key. Because there's, again, not much in your control. It's hard to predict. You know, Julia Lang now is replacing Python. Okay, well, how much more do I put in Python education? Do I fish and cut, you know, do I move over here and plow this field if it's data science? Yeah. If it's not data science, you know, there's still so much to do. I think learning languages, right? If you're in sociology or some of those degrees, you can't emphasize that enough. All of my friends that speak four or five languages fluently do well in this world. Mm-hmm. They can plug themselves in. And I I won't emphasize that enough.